we remember former First Lady Barbara Bush. If more people could read, write, and comprehend, we would be that much closer to solving so many of the problems that plague our nation. Again, we are just learning now. Former First Lady Barbara Bush has died at the age of 92. Barbara Bush. I have no fear of death, and I don't have a fear of death for my precious George or for myself, because I know that there is a great God, and I'm not worried about that. Now, back to the WGAN Morning News with Ken and Matt, brought to you by the Red Jacket Mountain View Resort on News Radio WGAN. And we're back again, 7.09 on the WGAN Morning News with Ken and Matt. We are, of course, remembering Barbara Bush today. She passed away at the age of 92 uh, and uh, talking a lot about her life uh, today. And we're joined now to learn a little bit more about that life by the First Lady's man, Andrew Oak. Andrew had an opportunity to join us, God, I think it was a couple months ago, Andrew, and you told us uh, a lot about many First Ladies. But right now, let's focus our attention on Barbara Bush. Andrew, how are you this morning? Uh, good and nice to be back with you guys this morning. I want to I want to offer my condolences to the whole state of Maine. I know Barbara Bush was was your first lady. She was very special to you, directly in the work that she did there at the Barbara Bush Memorial uh, Hospital in Portland. And uh, it, it's a great loss, but also a great legacy and one to be celebrated. And so let's talk about this a little bit. How do you think she will be remembered? And what was uh, peculiar or particular traits of hers while she was the first lady? Well, she, she'll be remembered as, as one of our most productive post-White House first ladies. She is someone that, that carried her work that she did in the White House and started at the White House far out and beyond the White House. And this shouldn't come as a surprise because she's been involved with public service her entire life. Her husband uh, was involved in politics, involved in the CIA, involved as a foreign dignitary. Then her son, uh, George W. Bush, a president. Her other son, Jeb, a governor, and then running for president himself. So this woman was no stranger to public service. And the good things that she did, as, as I mentioned, you know, her, her, her work with children at the hospital, her work with literacy, 40, 50 some million dollars a year raised, and that work will continue. So, so that's what she'll be remembered almost as if she isn't gone because there's such strong uh, uh, um, institutions in place with her name that memorialize her. Uh, we're talking to Andrew Oak, First Lady's Man, uh, and Andrew, the book, of course, that you've written on this. Uh, one more time, if you wanted to uh, buy it, it's First Lady's Influence and Image. Um, uh, that's the Sea Sand Spears, excuse me. The, the book uh, is First Lady's... Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Thank Volume you. 1 and Volume 2, available at firstladiesman.com. I write very, very fondly of Barbara Bush in Volume 2. And, you know, uh, this was a woman who could split personal and political. She always emphasized the need and, and the, the necessity to remember family and loved ones and spend time with them, because no matter what you accomplish, no matter how many awards you get, how many buildings are named after you, when it's all said and done at the end of the day, if you haven't spent quality time with your friends, family, loved ones, then, then, then that's, that's, that's what really, really counts. And to be a politician or, or in the world of politics and have no one be able to say a bad thing about you is unprecedented. I don't know of anyone else who can do this like Barbara Bush. And everyone I talk to, especially people that worked with her uh, in the White House, uh, in her husband's administration, Secret Service agents that worked in multiple administrations, butlers, pastry chefs, they all say the same thing. Barbara Bush was their favorite. And all politics aside, they were sorry to see her leave the White House. And Andrew, if I could follow up on her time as First Lady, uh, you know, obviously with uh, the transition from the Reagan White House to the Bush White House, uh, she was a very different First Lady than Nancy Reagan was, and and actually very different from many First Ladies prior to to her. Uh, talk to us about that difference and, and what she brought to uh, to being First Lady. Well, she was very frank. She, she said what she meant, and she meant what she said. She was also a true bipartisan First Lady. She loved to entertain people, not, not, not Democrats or Republicans. And I think having... 12 years in the White House combined between the wife of the vice president and going into the, 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 the first lady role, she really shines. She didn't take herself too seriously, too. I mean, she was serious about her causes, 
and, and a very serious woman, but she didn't take herself too seriously. And there's a difference. And when you have a self-deprecating sense of humor or you have that you, you have complete knowledge of what your self-worth is and what your image is, people take you m- more seriously, I think, you know, that you can get more accomplished because you're a real person. You're a genuine person. And that's the way she portrayed herself throughout her entire life and especially her time as First Lady. You know, they, when she first got into the White House, I think there was an interview where someone said, asked her that, that you know, they, they said that she wasn't a terribly attractive lady. She said that she was a fine-looking lady. She just didn't dress very well. And people took that uh, as, as a nod to, to just what kind of person she was. She, she knew the importance of herself and her family and her role, but she didn't take herself too seriously personally. And that goes a long way and allowed her to be a very, very effective first lady. Andrew, if you know about it, we've talked a little bit about how first ladies uh, across the board have been treated in death from Jackie Kennedy on to the present. Uh, lying in state, uh, flags at half staff, whether there's more pomp and, uh, pomp and ceremony for some than others. Is there, there's really no official uh, treatment of first ladies when they die. Is it up to each president or the family how to celebrate their life? That's absolutely correct, and 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 they have so many places where they are felt so strongly. Texas, of course, and I know that their that their their daughter that they lost very very young was uh, was was reburied, reinterned at the Bush Library in College Station, and so I, I'm sure that's where the family is is planning on having their uh, their plot and 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 where their their people will be entombed and memorialized. But all of this celebration of what happens in Maine and what happens in Texas, and she was born in New York City, they could have something there. Of course, in Washington, D.C., there will be celebrations and memorials, and whether she comes here for, for any type of uh, ceremony is, is, is uh, yet to be seen, but that is up to the family, and they can do uh, pretty much whatever they want, as any family should. And Andrew, why don't you tell us uh, maybe an interesting story or something that is quintessentially Barbara Bush that uh, that you know about her uh, from either her time in the in the White House or maybe outside of it that uh, that really speaks to who her what her character is and who she is. Well, I, I think the most moving story is one that I heard very recently when I was spending time in Maine, in Portland, and that's that uh, within the past couple of years there was a terminally ill child, and and his last wish was to speak to Mrs. Bush. He just wanted to talk to her. Uh, I think he had met her a couple times at the uh, Memorial Hospital there, and uh, someone got in touch with her Secret Service detail, got her on the phone and did a video chat, and she was in Texas and couldn't get to this child's side to have a face-to-face conversation, but took time out of her day and made it a point to talk to this child because all he wanted to do was talk to her uh, before his untimely uh, passing, and she made that happen. And it just it just speaks volumes about what this woman was willing to go through and what she did go through for others in a truly selfless manner that will be remembered for, for forever in her legacy. Andrew Oak joining us, first a ladies' man. Once again, Andrew, can you tell people where they can go to get either one of your first lady books? Sure. Firstladies.man.com is where you get all the interviews, all the books, all my articles, everything's my thoughts, pictures of travels, and, and all of that, of course, includes uh, my time studying Barbara Bush, such a wonderful, wonderful First Lady. Uh, honestly, one, one of the likes we, we, we will be lucky to see again. All right, Andrew, really appreciate you joining us to give us this look back at her life. Uh, we'll, of course, be talking about it all morning. And uh, I'm sure uh, that a lot of people probably will be buying those books looking for some of those stories. So thanks a lot, Andrew. Thank you. You all have a wonderful day. You too. Take care.